So I'm running tracks from a virtual machine that I've downloaded from the Bitnami site. I've started up the virtual machine. I can see what URL I have to connect to and it's telling me what the default admin username and password are. So if I go off to that website, it redirects me to the login. Now the reason I'm going to use these, I'm going to use the application first before I attempt to use the API because then I'll learn a little bit more about the capabilities and what kind of things I might want to test with this, right? Because using the API is different from testing the app. So I'm going to learn a little bit about the application first. So I know that a user has to log in. So I'm expecting that when I use the REST API, I'm going to have to do some authentication on there. This is the main site. Having logged in and then faced with a list of all the to-dos and context or projects that I've set up here. I can see that it's fairly easy for me to create new next actions. So I must have the ability to create to-do items in this app because this is essentially a to-do item application. If you're not sure about what Get on Tracks is, have a look through the Tracks website and it will explain it a bit first or in the, is there a help system? Okay, so the help system, I guess, is their main tracks website and that will tell you what tracks is all about and it's essentially a getting things done action a to-do system so when we log in we're faced with lists of things so i can create to-do items over here i can see what projects we've got i can mark to-dos as done I can star them if they're important i can edit them now you can see here what's interesting is from a gui perspective there's a lot of ajax we're not really going to automate the GUI, so we don't care about that. What we're interested in is the basic entities that we work with, to-do items, contexts, projects. I can see up here there's projects, there's users, because I can create, delete, amend users. And you can see I've been doing this for a while, so I have 214 users in here, so there must be a way of creating users automatically. We're going to learn how to do that. Now, if I jump through the GUI here, I've got lists of things on the home screen, the to do some projects, there's starred items, things that are important. There's a whole bunch of projects because we organize to do's into projects and I can delete projects, which hopefully will delete all the to do's that are underneath it. I can amend projects and you can see that they've got descriptions, they've got names and I've been messing about with security testing here so you can see that. There's different statuses that projects can have, there's a default context. Now essentially what we're going to do is we're just walk, walking through the GUI to get a feel for the basic functionality. So presumably from the API, I can get a list of projects. I can get a list of the to-do items that are on my reminder list, the tickler list. I can organize, what does this organize thing do? It lets me organize context so I can amend the context. So we can review things, we can uh, look at calendars, just as a general feel for what this application does, we can use the admin. Now, when we look at the, the case study, we're going to be mainly focused on creating users because that's what we have to do in order to work with this, creating projects, creating to-do lists, creating and amending to-dos. We'll focus on the, the basic entities first. So I appreciate that wasn't a very in-depth overview of the GUI but you don't really need a big overview of the GUI in order to start using the API. What you need to do is understand the basic concepts of the application, use the GUI, make sure it basically works because then you know that you've installed it correctly. You can use the GUI to check when you do things on the API, has it been reflected in the GUI? Have you actually put it into the right system? And also from the GUI, we have access to the actual API documentation itself and the examples there are in curl. So when we get started with this application, what we'll basically do is copy and paste the curl commands into the command line and see if they actually do what the documentation says. So download and install the application, possibly use a virtual machine, that's what I use, get it up and running, have a look around the GUI, have a read of the documentation, have a read of the main website to figure out what the application is, and then you should be ready to get started and work with the application either through the GUI or through the REST API with Carl.